So far to this video, I thought I would try to break down everything that makes up a character in Guardian Tales. I'll try to keep it as simplified as possible, but do keep in mind that I'm recording this before the Nintendo Switch launch, using the mobile version, so I don't know if everything I'm going to speak on will be in the launch version of the Nintendo Switch. The first thing that makes up a hero is their rarity. Heroes can come as one of three base rarities, which are normal, rare, and unique. These are also referred to as natural 1 stars, natural 2 stars, or natural 3 stars respectively. Unique heroes, or nat trees as I might refer to them as, are the cream of the crop. The heroes with the best stats and abilities. Rare heroes are serviceable and will make up the bulk of your team for the beginning of your adventure. Normal heroes, the natural 1 stars, are there for memes. Now all heroes, no matter their base rarity, can be upgraded to 5 stars, which unlocks more stats and abilities. This is an extremely slow process for unique heroes and funny enough, normal heroes. Which is why the bulk of your team in the beginning will be rare heroes, as these are the fastest heroes to accelerate to 5 stars. Now all heroes come with a role. These roles are warrior, tanker, ranged, or support. Now these roles give a basic idea of what the hero will play like, but they aren't always the most accurate. Overall, this isn't too important when it comes to understanding the character. What is important though is the element of the character. Characters can have one of six elements. These elements are dark, light, basic, yes this is an element, water, fire, and earth. These elements also follow a weakness and resistance chart, but it is split into two. On one hand, fire beats earth, earth beats water, and water beats fire, and that forms one of the circles of life. On the other hand, dark beats basic, basic beats light, and light beats dark which makes up your second circle of life. Now if one element clashes with an element outside of their circle, it counts as a neutral or equal engagement. Please take note that the hero's natural element only affects their defense when it comes to their elemental advantage matchups. This is because all weapons come with an element, and the element of the weapon determines your attacking element. So for example, a water element hero can equate a fire element sword, which means that if said hero battles an earth element hero who has an earth element weapon, while the water hero is weak to earth and would take more damage, they can also hit the earth element hero for advantageous damage because they are wielding a fire weapon. Let's go right into equipment next. All heroes can wield a weapon, and as I said before, the weapon determines what type of elemental damage they will do. Some heroes can equip both a weapon and a shield, but not all heroes can do this. So the second weapon slot is usually reserved for heroes who can carry a shield, except for one special hero who can wield two weapons at the same time. Right under the weapon slots we have the accessories. These just give extra stats and effects. On the top right we have what is called merch. These are similar to accessories giving both stats and a bonus effect. The major difference between merch and accessories is that merch is more focused on the added effects whereas accessories are more focused on stats. The next two slots under merch are the card slots. Each hero can equip two cards but instead of giving stats and effects like accessories and merch, Cards are more about enhancing effects or stats you already have. Although they can add stats or effects if you didn't have them at all when equipping the cards. The last equipment slot is actually for costumes. These change the look of your character. Let's now look at powering up heroes, which are the four buttons at the bottom center of the screen. Hero evolution is how you advance in star rank. You do this by using evolution stones unique to the said hero you are trying to advance in star rank. It is highly advised not to buy these stones from the shop using hero crystals and just slowly farm them out. Next is Limit Break. This only applies after a hero is at 5 star. And what this does is allow them to go beyond the level cap. Limit Breaking is also the reason it is advised not to buy evolution stones from the shop using hero crystals. As hero crystals are required for Limit Breaking and they are an extremely rare resource. Next we have Awakening. This is how you unlock more stats and abilities beyond just leveling up your equipment. For this menu, I advise only unlocking the very first circle for any character you are using. The reason for this is that it unlocks your chain skill which I will explain very soon. The reason I also recommend only doing the very first circle is because some of the nodes use an extremely rare resource called Legendary Awakening Stones. Do not go past the first circle until you fully understand the importance of this screen. Now about those chain skills I mentioned, every hero except the meme normal rarity heroes gets a chain skill. Now this chain skill is a skill you get to use once you inflict a status break on the enemy. To inflict a status break on the enemy, you need to use your weapon skill a certain number of times, 
until the enemy breaks essentially and is stuck in the status break state. Once the correct status break is inflicted, your chain skill can be activated. The status breaks you can inflict are downed, injured and airborne. The status you inflict is determined by the weapon you have equipped. So ideally, if your chain skill starts with the airborne status, you want to equip a weapon that also inflicts the airborne status after using its weapon skill a certain number of times. Now this is where the chain part comes into play. Every chain skill essentially forms a link. So for this current character, you can see that it activates off of the airborne status. But then it changes the status break to down, and this is how you form a chain. Ideally, the next character on your team should have a chain skill that starts with the down state, which allows them to activate their chain skill right after your main character does. Essentially forming up to a 4 character chain for big combo damage. Now chain skills are a lot to take in, and no enemy in the early game will be strong enough to take a full chain. So I suggest you just play for a bit and get accustomed to activating your initial chain skill. If anything, I'll make a dedicated guide on how to do it step by step. Now something much easier to understand is the party buff. All heroes, even meme heroes, carry a party buff. All this boils down to is an effect that works on your full party. Look at it as a universal buff, as it is usually just a stat increase, boosting things like dark type damage or defense for example. It plays a role in team building. The last thing I'm going to cover is special abilities. To unlock your character's special ability, you need to evolve them to 5 star. I believe only unique and rare heroes get these and not meme heroes. Special abilities vary, but what they all do is make your character better in some way. And that's it for this character guide. Do keep in mind that despite being long, this is still very basic and characters in Guardian Tales can become very intricate. The good thing is that it is only as intricate as you make it. You can easily play most of the game by just slapping on the correct gear and powering up. I find this is the best way to proceed with a game because the more you enjoy it, the more you will want to learn and then the learning process becomes easier. So this was just meant to be a starter guide. Until next time, my name is Kujex and you can expect more Guardian Tales videos in the future.